I'm going to break down how to build your very own 3D lightsaber configurator with React in less time than it takes for Palpatine to clone himself. I'll show you how to create 3D animations, update colors based on user selections, tying in sound effects, and much more. So grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. I also want to give a special shout out to Brilliant.org for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the fundamentals of 3D web development, be sure to visit 3JSRoadmap.com and sign up so you can get notified of when my first course is released. You'll also receive a code for 30% off your first purchase. Now, we're going to need to install some libraries before we can start coding. The first we'll need is 3JS. Now, 3JS is a library that sits on top of WebGL, which makes it a heck of a lot easier to create 3D web experiences. We'll also need React 3 Fiber, which is a wrapper for 3.js that converts all of the 3.js classes into React components. What this allows us to do is to build 3D scenes declaratively. React 3 Fiber also removes a lot of the boilerplate associated with 3.js and brings some additional performance improvements, especially around post-processing. React 3 Dry is a library of useful helpers and components for React 3 Fiber. I highly recommend browsing through the docs as there are a lot of really impressive pre-made components and effects that will make your 3D scenes pop. Finally, we'll be using the React 3 Fiber post-processing library. Post-processing are effects that we apply to the screen after we've rendered the 3D content. We'll be using this to add effects like bloom, noise, vignette, and more. Now the project structure for our app is actually quite simple. We'll be primarily working with three different components. The first is the app component, which is the entry point into our app and where we set up all of our UI code. The next is our scene component. Now this will be embedded inside of our app component and that's where we'll handle setting up the 3D scene with the lighting, the camera controls, the post-processing and so on. Finally, we'll have our lightsaber component and this will be responsible for all the logic regarding our lightsaber, like loading the 3D models, doing the animations, playing the sound effects, etc. Let's get into the actual coding now. At the top of your app.jsx file, we first need to add a couple of variables. The first is an array of handle, or I'm going to call it hilt objects, which contain the name of the hilt that I wanted to display on the UI and the path to the 3D model in the public directory for that hilt. Next, we'll create an array of colors that we want our blade to be. So these are the options that the user can pick from. The setup of the app component is quite simple. First, we define the state for our UI, which includes the selected blade color, the hilt style, and whether or not the lightsaber is open or activated. Next, we'll define a canvas, which is the root element that will contain our 3D scene. This is an HTML canvas element under the hood, which is powered by WebGL. Now I've given the scene a temporary background color so we can actually see what's going on instead of everything being black. We'll create a camera and then we'll give it a position within the 3D scene. The camera is what will convert the 3D representation of our scene to the 2D representation that we'll see on the screen. And then finally, we'll add in our scene component and pass in the UI state to that. Now let's jump into our scene component. We'll start simple and we'll build this up as we go. The component takes in as props the blade color, the hilt style, and a Boolean dictating whether or not the lightsaber is currently on. These are all of our UI state variables. Since we don't have our lightsaber models yet, I'm going to put a box in the scene just as a placeholder for now. I'm also adding in a directional light, which just adds a base level of light in the scene. Finally, we'll import some orbit controls from dry, which will allow us to rotate, pan, and zoom within the scene. To ground our scene, we'll add a floor with a reflective material using the mesh reflector material from dry. Later on, when we add in our Star Wars inspired environment, the floor will reflect that and our lightsaber, and it will look badass, trust me. First, let's set the rotation and position of the floor so that it will sit right underneath our lightsaber. Our floor geometry is just a flat circle with a radius of 1000, which basically extends it out as far as we can see. On the reflector material itself, I'm setting the color to a darkish gray material and that will darken the reflection a bit so it's not so intense. I'm also setting the resolution of the reflections to 1024, which gives a good performance to quality ratio. And we can try 256 and you can see the reflection quality is quite poor, while 2048 gives a very crisp reflection at the expense of performance. 
Now, if you see the word pie and you're wondering why we're talking about delicious desserts, it might be time to brush up on some math knowledge. But worry not, because my friends at Brilliant.org have you covered. Brilliant is a learning platform that takes on a first principles approach, where you learn by doing instead of watching some boring lecture. They have thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, all of which can be applied to software development. Their course on vectors alone has over 22 lessons, which starts from the very basics on what a vector is to more advanced topics like rotation, reflections, and handling different coordinate systems. Now, I've personally tried some of their courses, especially on Python and neural networks, and I was very impressed by the quality of the content and the lessons and how engaging they were. If you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash dangreenheck or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So check it out today. Now I know there isn't much to look at yet, so let's go get some lightsaber models and add them to our scene. I found a bunch of really cool lightsaber handles on Sketchfab. Here's a few examples, and I'll post links in the description for these. I downloaded these as GLB files and then imported each of them into Blender. I made sure that each had the same scale and aligned all of them so the top parts where the blades come out of are all flush with each other. Now this ensures that when we swap out the different lightsaber handles, they're always in the right place and we don't have to apply a unique offset to each of them. I exported each hilt as a separate GLB file from Blender, and then I dropped them in the public directory in my project. Now with the lightsaber models in hand, we can begin building out our lightsaber react component. We'll pass in the props from our UI, which contain the configuration properties of our lightsaber. The lightsaber is itself composed of two components, the hilt and the blade. Since the hilt and the blade should move together, we contain both of them inside of a group. Loading the lightsaber GLB models is done using the useGLTF hook. All we do is pass in the URL of our selected hilt, and then we get a reference to the model back. Now to add our model to the scene, we add a primitive component and set its object property to the scene property of our hilt model that we loaded. And now in our UI, when we select different hilt styles, it will automatically update the hilt model. Now to add our blade, we'll start by adding a group, and I'll explain in a little bit why we need this group. This group is assigned a reference called blade ref. We'll be using this reference later on to animate the blade length. Now the group is given a Y position of 0.95 and that will put it right at the top of the handle. And then the scale and the Y axis is initially set to zero because the blade starts in the retracted state. Inside of our blade group, we will add a mesh for the blade. We'll be using a capsule geometry to give a nice rounded look at the end of the lightsaber and we'll give it a radius of 0.05, a length of three, and then we'll use 32 sides to make it nice and smooth. The material that we're using, just a plain old standard material. Since our lightsaber blade is uniformly emitting light, we're going to be using the emissive property and we'll setting that to the blade color property that we passed in. Giving this an intensity of five really gave me the best results. Now back to why we needed that group for our blade. The reason is that all the built-in geometry in 3GS has its origin at its center. Therefore, if we were to scale our capsule directly, it would collapse in towards the center, which wouldn't look right. When we retract the lightsaber, we want the far end to collapse towards the handle. By offsetting the capsule mesh by half its length inside the group, we achieve this effect. When we change the blade color in the UI, we can now see that the blade model changes colors as well. Now that we have a blade, let's animate the blade expanding and retracting as the power button is toggled. We'll start by creating a new use frame hook at the top of our lightsaber file. This code will run each time our scene is rendered, so anywhere from 60 to 120 times per second, depending on your monitor's refresh rate and your graphics hardware. We'll need some constants to control how quickly our lightsaber will open and close. And we'll also need a reference to the scale since we'll be animating the Y component of that scale based on whether or not the lightsaber is currently on. If the lightsaber is on, we'll increase the Y scale of the lightsaber until we hit one or 100% extended. Otherwise, 
will decrease the Y scale until it hits zero or fully retracted. To add in some realism, we'll also add a point light to our lightsaber blade, which will emit light when the lightsaber is on. This will make it look like light from the lightsaber is reflecting off of the ground. Once again, we'll use the use ref hook to get a reference to the light. This reference is used back in our animation code. The intensity of the light is made proportional to the scale of the blade. So it will gradually grow to full brightness when the blade is fully extended. Switching gears for now, let's add in a sweet Star Wars inspired background to make our lightsaber look more at home. I use the Blockade Labs AI to generate this background, somewhat reminiscent of the Death Star interior. Suck it, rebel scum. The only problem is that the HDR images it generates are massive, almost 50 megabytes. So I first scaled down the resolution and then I used this tool called Monogrid to convert them into gain maps. The resultant file is only a few megabytes and the decrease in quality really isn't that noticeable to my eyes. Now when you're exporting these, make sure to export as a combined SDR gain map so you just get it all in one image. Also, I want to give a special shout out to Anderson Mancini for recommending both of these tools. Anderson is an extremely talented 3D developer so you should definitely check out his socials. Now adding in our Star Wars environment map is as simple as adding a component from dry with just a few parameters. First, we'll set the background to true to show that background image. Then we'll set the intensity to 0.8, which darkens the image just a little bit. We don't want it to take away from the lightsaber. Now I set the environment intensity to two because I'm a sucker for environment reflections and I like them to be really strong in this case. Our environment will reflect off the hilt of our lightsaber and off the floor and just tie everything together. Finally, we specify the path to our environment file with the gain map in it, and that's in our public directory. The next step is to really enhance the graphics of our configurator with some post-processing effects. I'll be adding in three different types of effects and we'll be starting with Bloom. Now to set up post-processing, we first need to add an effects composer to the bottom of our scene component. All of our effects will be declared inside of this effects composer. We'll start by adding some bloom, which is responsible for giving that characteristic glow effect to the lightsaber. Note how the core of the lightsaber is essentially white, while the edges have more color. And that matches how lightsabers appear in the movies. You can set the intensity of the bloom to control how much glow there is. I'm also setting mip map blur to true as well, because it just produces a more realistic blur effect in my opinion, looks much better. Next, we'll add a vignette effect, which darkens the edges of the screen and gives it a bit of a cinematic quality. I tweaked the offset and blur properties until I got the desired amount of darkening. Finally, we'll be adding in some noise. Now, I know it might sound a bit odd to add some noise into our scene, but noise actually helps make things feel more organic and more like you're watching a movie in a theater. It reduces some of that sterile quality that some 3D scenes can have. Now I'm just using a very small amount of noise here. I'm only setting the intensity to 0.02. So it's really almost not even noticeable, but I do think it's an improvement. Now, if you watch any of the movies closely, you can see that the lightsabers flicker a little bit, especially when they're colliding with another lightsaber. This gives the feeling that there is real energy and power inside of that lightsaber. We can easily reproduce this flicker effect by updating the intensity of our bloom effect each frame. First, we create a reference to our bloom effect via use ref. Then we'll use the use frame hook to update the intensity of our bloom each frame. The base bloom intensity is two, and then I'm adding a bunch of sine wave functions together of varying frequencies to produce a noise function. I multiply all of these sine functions by a small constant to keep the flicker amount quite small. This is a small change, but it does make quite a difference in the final look and feel of the scene. The last thing we need to add in is those iconic lightsaber sounds. I found the Star Wars soundboard, so I just grabbed a bunch of sounds from here. There's four different sounds that we'll need. The lightsaber opening, the lightsaber closing, the lightsaber on or humming, and the lightsaber swinging. Now the load audio function that you see is actually defined in a separate utility file. 
I won't get into the fine details of the Web Audio API since there's quite a bit to it, but the gist is that we fetch our audio file, convert it into a byte buffer, and then decode that audio using an audio context. We'll also add another utility function for playing the audio. It takes our audio buffer as an argument, the gain or the volume of the audio, and whether or not we want that sound to loop. We'll begin by getting the current audio context, and then we'll need both a gain node, which allows us to control the volume of the audio, and a source node, which contains our audio buffer. We configure our audio nodes and then connect them together. The source node connects to the gain node, and then the output of the gain node is connected to the audio context destination, which is basically our speakers. Finally, we'll start the sound, and then we'll return the source node so we can keep a reference to it if we want to stop it later on. With our audio utility functions in place, let's get them hooked up in our lightsaber. First, let's create a constant for keeping track of the current audio source that's playing. I'll show you what this is used for in just a second. Next, let's add an effect that will get triggered whenever our lightsaber on state changes. We'll do a quick null check at the top to make sure our audio files are loaded before we attempt to play them. Now when the lightsaber is on, we want to play that opening sound as well as playing the hum sound. We only play the opening sound once, but that steady state hum sound is on a loop. We assign that to our current audio source reference so we can stop it once we turn the lightsaber off. And then once the lightsaber is turned off, we'll also play the closing sound. Now last, but certainly not least, let's add a sound in when the lightsaber is swung around. In our lightsaber, we'll add one more use frame hook. This time we'll destructure the input arguments and get the current pointer or mouse state. We do some preliminary checks to make sure the swing sound is loaded, the lightsaber is on, and the user is currently pressing down the mouse button. We'll compute the change in the mouse position from the last frame by keeping track of the previous frame's mouse x coordinate. And finally, we'll check that the mouse movement exceeds some threshold of pixels, and we'll play the swing sound if it is. In order to keep the sound from playing a million times, I've added some debouncing using set timeout. So once the sound plays, the is swing property is set to true, and the sound cannot play again until the timeout expires and the is swinging property is set back to false. And there we have it, a 3D lightsaber configurator that would make Baby Yoda proud. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider supporting me on Patreon as well as checking out my other tutorial series. Until next time, may the force be with you.